Okay. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Lauren, and today I'm joined with Nikki and Mariah from Main Muse Hair & Co. Um, I worked as their like branding, social media like consultant person um, for their new studio. So they just started Main Muse Hair & Co. And so we're just gonna go through a bunch of questions today that we asked you guys on to ask on Instagram. And we're just going to do a bit of like a Q and A. So, yay, yay. <laughs> okay, number one. <laughs> How did we start working together? Okay, do we want to answer that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so basically Nikki and I grew up together, um, like since we were like, what, eight or something? Yeah. yeah, we've been like best friends since we were really little. And I do like information design in school, or like I'm graduated now, but. And Nikki's a hairstylist, so I thought we could collab. <laughs> yeah, they wanted to like go out on their own and like basically have been there since like step one. Like literally choosing the girl, <laughs> <laughs> like choosing the name yeah. and everything to like where we're at now. It just kind of like happened because we're I like friends. Yeah. yeah, you were like the first, one of the first people to know for sure. Yeah, yeah, she was. Yeah, so. yeah. It was I remember when it wasn't even like that name. Yeah, like now it's Main Muse Hair and Co. But it wasn't that at the start. No. So. Yeah, we literally have sat in like my mom's kitchen working on stuff. Yeah. We've like we've been working on things for. Like a year now? Probably. <laughs> it's been a year. So yeah. long. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah. Okay. What inspired our branding and how you helped us create our vision? How did we how we got from like one spot to, to another? another? Okay. Because I I was just looking at our well, old branding. Yeah. And it was like from the first day that we met and there was like polka dots and black colors. Like, it was so, so different. different. It was so, so different. different. <laughs> yeah, we've come a long way. Yeah. Yeah. And we've changed our mind a million times. Yeah. But I think the best thing like as like do it someone who does branding is to get a mood board like mm -hmm. or a joint Pinterest board with your client. Yeah. And basically just have them add things, have you add things, and then you can kind of like see the vision that they want rather than just like them talking about it because that helps a lot. We had a because I don't know what they want. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, maybe we'll add a few pins like yeah. here and there to show you guys like where, where we started. started. And where we are now. Yeah. The fall. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I actually, I have a question on here. The what is our favorite Starbucks drink? So that could oh, be a okay. Fun okay. Okay. Should we do one hot, one cold? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, hot cinnamon dolce latte, or hold on, there's another one. Um, <laughs> um, Americano with two pumps of white mocha. Super mm -hmm. good. Because so more good. caffeine and then yeah. a little bit of sugar, but not too much. Um, and then very, very refreshing. That's mine. I hate. I know. used to get that at work all the time. So we cute. still do. We still do. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's changed. No. So cute. Um, okay, for me, so I don't drink any caffeine. So, was mine decaf today? No. Oh, no. You always Shh. do that. I always do that. So I don't normally drink caffeine unless I forget. Like when people are picking me up drinks, I always forget to say decaf. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably why I'm wired right now. Uh, okay. I'll say. Yeah, like <laughs> I don't drink caffeine. So when I do, I get like, Super <laughs> antsy, but um, so for a hot drink, a mm, I don't know, I don't even know. There's so many. like a decaf mocha with soy, probably, and then for a cold drink, a decaf iced caramel macchiato, half sweet with soy. Talk about complicated. I know. <laughs> I'm very high maintenance. Or, or in iced chai and I will drink caffeine if it's in chai just yeah. because I love chai and you can't get it's, chai it's decaf. True, yeah. And it's like my favorite. That's my favorite. It's yeah. the classic chai tea latte. Yeah. That's so my good. favorite hot drink. And then berry berry hibiscus. I hate berry tea. tea. Like I hate No but it's good. Oh, no, it's yeah, no I hate it. Really? Favorite influencers for branding hair any of that kind of stuff. What inspires us? Who inspires us on Instagram? For like branding and stuff, I think Nicola Jane Creative, um, Bronte Grace <laughs> Creative, and probably for like illustrations, and then like Jasmine Dowling for like just inspiration, I guess. Okay, so hair by Caitlin Brown, Main Ivy, um, Chris, Chris Weaver, Weaver, yeah. Um, Big fan. Daniel M. Beauty, yeah, love him. He's pretty good. Um, and Habit Hair Salon. So all love the girls, the braids. yeah, we love we the love braids. It. Yeah. So I just got my hair done last week. Yeah. Yeah. So they're just get, someone asked on Instagram like what I got done. So you guys tell them what I got. So done. <laughs> I did 
a maxi blonde service, which essentially is baby lights full head, back to back, so you don't have too much in between, so it looks very, what's the word, like naturally me, natural. Well, it's like really, really bright. It's, so it's bright, the brightest as I can get it. Yeah, yeah. And then we did a money piece here, so it looks nice and bright and frames the face. Um, and then for the maxi blonde, what you actually do, whatever is left out of the foil, you tip it out. Explain yeah. that. Tip it out means you are creating a more universal kind of solid. Bal you're balayaging. Balayaging the ends yeah. just to kind of create a more solid look rather than, like if you look at mine and Lauren's hair, you, I still have brown in between enough dimension where Lauren is mainly blonde, blonde where it goes kind of gradual. It's very soft here, it's solid. Mm -hmm. um, and then we did 22 inch aqua hair extensions and matched them pretty perfectly with our coloring. Yeah. And yeah. I'm so obsessed with waves. And they're tapins. They're tapins, yeah. yeah. So they're they tape last they, how long? They last about seven to eight weeks. You do need to get them done every so often so that you don't get matting. The nice thing about tapins is that they're very safe, not damaging for your hair, as they do have medical grade tape. Very easy mm -hmm. to take out. And, and they you look can like wear really, them. Yeah, they look natural. You can yeah. put your hair up, down. Yeah, like if I can, put, I can put my hair up, up you can't like, tell. Yeah, I can cover it like really yeah. well. Like you can't see it, you can't tell. Yeah, it doesn't pull or hurt. No, or it doesn't hurt at all. No. Like for the first night, it was uncomfortable. You get a little tense the first night, so I always recommend yeah. taking an Advil before you come in to get them done. Yeah. Um, but after that, they become like a part of you. Mariah's had them in; she loved them. Yeah. yeah. And my hair is still healthy. Yeah. And yeah strong. Like it doesn't. If anything, it, doesn't it actually damage. grows yeah. your hair out because you're not putting as much heat on your yeah. actual hair, but more so on the yeah. extension. It's true. Yep. So I love it's a it. Great so far. investment. A little bit pricey. It's but, very pricey, but, but it's very worth, worth it. it. Yeah. So worth and it lasts like this hair you said lasts like a year. A year and even sometimes more if you, if take, you care. take care of it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So definitely yeah. worth it. Go see them if you want it. And I'll just I'll just say it too. Like I was really scared that because I have really really thick, thick hair and, and blonde, blonde, like similar to mine almost. Yeah. So yeah. I was Mariah. really scared that it wouldn't like blend. Like you know, some girls get it done and like it looks like one layer Chalk. of hair and then they have extensions. Like yeah. I was super worried about that, but like we got enough that it like it blends yeah. well. And Nikki like did a really good job of like putting them and then we shape them like, in. Yeah. Um. So that you blend the hair up here into it, so you kind of yeah. create like shorter pieces up front to give it that look and you take that front layer is almost like a bang. Yeah. Yeah. So, this, like, yeah. this looks like your hair. Yeah, yeah like people does. people are saying like and oh, Laura your hair grow so fast in quarantine. I'm like yeah. it didn't. It didn't. It didn't. <laughs> she does have four packs though. Standard I would say is three, but if you have a little bit thicker blunter hair you definitely need four to hide yeah. that line. Yeah. And mine's like extremely thick. thick. Like, yeah. No, it's like it's four very thick. thick. Yeah. So like Probably most people, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Favorite white line. Mm. Ooh, Lolia. I like Lolia. Yeah, I think Lolia. Yeah, 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 I think done. I have one. Should we drink that? Yes, we, we should. should. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think I should go get us some wine, and we'll be right back. All right, so we're back. <laughs> we took a little um, break, and now we have our wine. It's not white, but that's okay. Yeah, it's what I had. I thought I had Lolia, and I drank it because it's so good. <laughs> Finished. Advice for somebody starting a small business. Mm. Mm. Choose the right person if you do it with someone. For mm. sure. Yes. That's a big thing. I think um, whatever you're doing, you need to find a good mentor. Yes. Somebody who inspires you. That's whether true. that be like social media or like somebody you know that you can go sit down for coffee and kind of like see the ins and outs from their side. It doesn't have to be like the same kind of business, but yeah. you know what I mean? Um, and gosh, there are so, so many aspects to that. I think for me, like from what I've learned from like helping them and helping other small businesses, the most important thing that I think is like having a clear brand. Like yeah, I know that's my job, but like yeah. honestly, like having a like vision. a vision and like a clear identity of like who you are as a brand. And what you represent. Yeah, like makes it so much easier for your clients to like identify with you, having like a clear website, clear social media, like people will be so much more likely to like choose you for whatever you're doing just because like you look like you know what you're doing. Yeah. Like for example, like for me, like my best, like I love working with like feminine, um, 
like small businesses. Like that's like my favorite thing, like yeah. young feminine brands. That's and so like, niche, that's my niche. Yeah. And like, yeah. so I post content that will attract, will attract people that you want yeah. as clients. Yeah, yeah. the right the clientele. Exactly. Okay. Um, how do you plan your Insta feed? Tips and tricks to find your niche. Okay, um, how do you plan your Instagram feed? So honestly, I would download an app like Planoly or, um, mm -hmm. or something like that. Always have something like that. Um, I always start with like as many photos as I can. Like I put in like filler photos from Pinterest or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like I usually create a Pinterest board for my Instagram, which is like random just content. content. Yeah. yeah, and then like either I can recreate that content to match my own brand or I can like use it as filler photos. But honestly, keeping the like filters the same or similar, yeah. um, like they do, they have like one filter that they kind of use across their platforms. Yeah. But also like keeping like the colors pretty similar. Like mm -hmm. so, if you're wanting like a like more of like a light and airy vibe, like try and use like lots of whites or like white backgrounds or yeah. whatever. Or like for me, like I love pink and like that's kind of my brand. So I have like yeah. pink in every photo, and I don't really steer away from that. Just because like a green background every now and then would be cute, but it would it's definitely disrupt my feed. If yeah. you did green, you would have to have pink in it too. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. try and just keeping like elements in all of your photos pretty similar. And just like planning planning it in your feed. Um, yeah. Creating content like all the time. Like if you Post see consistently is yeah, important to definitely create your feed. Definitely. Well now with this new like your yeah. your stuff can just disappear on Instagram now. Yeah, with the and algorithm, so, yeah. Even just posting on your story a lot, but it all has to like your I feel like your Instagram feed is like a mood board. It, it definitely is. It, is. it definitely yeah. is. And I'll definitely I'll give you some like very good tips that I have learned like through doing like social media, I've done like seminars and different like workshops and stuff on social media. And um, a couple like key things if you're trying to grow on Instagram, make sure you are posting on your story at least once a day mm -hmm. up to 10 times. Yeah, yeah. Do not go over 10 if you can. Like, I mean, if you're doing like talking videos and stuff and you're yeah. like getting engagement, that's fine. But at least once on your story and Honestly, as long as you're keeping consistency like two times a week on your feed, yeah. that is enough. If you want to do once a day, that's okay too. But with the algorithm, it does work best if you are doing it twice a week just to like grow. Yeah. Um, because this is a secret, but like, or like an Instagram like thing. But with the new algorithm, that freaking sucks. If you are posting, um, say like three times a day, if someone is scrolling through their feed and they don't like, two of your things mm -hmm. in a row, they will never see your content again unless they search your name. Yeah. Wow. So you yeah. will not be coming up on their feed if they miss two of your posts and do not interact with it in some way. So just remember that, like don't over post because then people will not be seeing your content if they're not engaging with it every single time. What are each of our top three hair products okay. and how to keep your hair perfectly cool? Okay. Like cool. Like cool. Like cool. Like cool. Like, cool. like cool blonde. Oh, okay. okay. I'm like, well, cool, cool blonde. Cool. Cool. <laughs> how to how to keep yourself looking cool? Yeah. Oh. So my top favorite hair products for sure is the Evo Happy Campers, the wearable leave-in treatment. I personally have very frizzy hair, so I need to tame it. It <laughs> smells. It, and oh it smells God, like Tom say. Ford. It's unreal. It's probably one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Then the second one would probably be Easy Tiger. I've really fallen in love with it. Yeah. It's a smoothing balm. I put it on wet. If you can air dry, blow dry, it just kind of tames the frizz. My hair goes up to like here eventually. <laughs> Great. Well, I like a good sea salt spray personally, just because I like more of like a messy, yeah. beachy, lived in kind of look. Or the Shebang Bang is great. Gosh, so many. Yeah. There's too many. There's too I many. Think I oh, and cooling. Them. God, I don't know what my favorite cooling product is. Probably the Fabuloso Platinum Blonde Conditioner, just because it is a little bit more of an intense one. So it's it color brightens up your blonde. blonde. Yeah. And I actually usually kiss my hair with the customized Fabulous Fat Pro, which I do pink just to kind of warm it up a little bit. It's a bit Gives it a little bit more of a beigey look rather than that gray look. Mm. Okay, my turn. Your turn. Go. Okay, so honestly, before working with Nikki Mariah, um, I'm not gonna lie, I don't use like any product. <laughs> I I honestly am like 
really good hair normally like and I don't like I've never used hairspray like I maybe the most I would use is like a cheap drugstore like oil like literally like I suck I'm plugging <laughs> I know this. like but like <laughs> <is> my, <laughs> but for me like my hair holds curls so well like I literally uh, I suck like I just I hated putting in product yeah. but now I'm so much more like aware of that like I need to take care of my hair <laughs> don't worry <laughs> I've learned yeah. and products so, are not bad as long as you're using the right product for your hair yeah That's and so now I think my favorite is like the Evo primer the what's that oh, one? Oh, the uh, Dave Grace, Dave Grace yeah. primer that's amazing because it protects your hair but it also like makes it smell nice and it's really good and then also like the happy camper wearable yeah. treatment is really nice to make like your ends like soft and stuff yeah. and i put them in both like wet and dry yeah like, you can use both yeah. Yeah. yeah and they're not heavy that's no. the greatest thing because that's why i feel dirty yeah like, you know products make you sometimes feel tacky yeah they don't do that and i'm not gonna lie also um I'm, you're gonna hate me for this but baby powder for dry shampoo. No, <laughs> my hair is really blonde, obviously, and like when my roots get really dark, <laughs> I or, don't talk. or water killer. <laughs> dry I'm not. I don't like dry shampoo because it, it does it at, makes yeah. it feel greasy yeah. or like not greasy but like thick and like yeah. gross, and I feel like I have to wash it after. Whereas like baby powder in my roots and it lightens it up when it's like really really bad. I know it's disgusting. I'm gross. gross. Like, and then to keep a cool um, color, I actually use, it's not an Evo product. No, you can say it, we but, care. We want to um, share what we actually use. Yeah, yeah. I've been using this product for like years because it's yeah. so cheap. And it is a great shampoo, it's, it's so a great good. alternative. Yeah, it's called ice cream. It's in like a pink bottle and you yeah. can usually find it with like the Manic Panic like hair coloring stuff at like shoppers and it's 10 bucks. Sorry, Manic Panic made my ears bleed. <laughs> Let me think here because I've been loving, I, I mean me and Nikki just started using Evo. Yeah, it's a game changer. Um, and so we, we're just still like kind of figuring out what our favorites are, I'd say. Um, I'm loving Headmistress, it's a cuticle sealer. Yes, you are. I will put that through my hair like wet and dry too. Um, and it's really light, but it does the job. Like my hair, especially if you've got like- Think of it as like split and glue. Yeah. It's great. Glue. 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 It's great. <laughs> The, the wine's getting to us. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now it's done. Uh, another one would be, I love Miss Malleable. Mm. It's a flexible hairspray. I also love the um, dry wax spray, but the shebang thing. But I, I feel like sometimes it's just, it depends what you want it, what kind of a look you want to achieve. And um, it's a little bit lighter, not as waxy, so I like it. Um, and then another one would be probably, Olaplex Bond Smoother. Mm -hmm. Is that one? Is that is, the one that you have, yeah. It's, yeah, I love yes. that too. It yes. is You really have nice. to use very little amount, but yeah. it does the job. Which is nice, because it's expensive for a little yeah. thing, but it lasts. It does which last, is, which time. is worth it. And yeah. it's very thin, so like it seals the hair and moisturizes it, but it doesn't feel like you just put like oil through your end. Where I don't have a lot of blonde in my hair, but for oh, keeping oh. it perfectly cool, but I have to say I love um, the Evo Fab Pro Color Maintenance System. So it's not the Fabuloso, but what it is is it's a. Um, we've uh, we've got a lot of our clients on it since quarantine, yeah. and um, it just refreshes, brings back the vibrance and shine back to your hair, and it's repairing. I will leave all of these products that we mentioned. Like I'll do like Lauren's favorites, mm -hmm. Nikki's hairs down. <laughs> I'm gonna tag my baby powder. Um, no. <laughs> and so, Johnson Johnson. Yeah, literally. Johnson. I've got the mask. Oh. What is your go-to hairstyle? Okay, so for like a lazy day, I really like the low bun where you leave a few pieces out, put some hoops in, call it a day. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Messy beachy, I use uh, salt spray. Salt scrunch my hair. Salt spray. I love all your salty dogs is today. Salt spray. Salt spray. Salt spray. Uh, my go-to hairstyle, you're looking at it. Um. <laughs> but I would say like for myself, like something quick if I want to like feel cute, but I don't want to take too much time. It's like if I already have like a messy wave in my hair, I'll like throw a little clip in on the side. Yeah. Or honestly, I never used to wear my hair up, but I'm loving the messy bun and just making it cute and like yeah, bringing those, some like, yeah. those pieces. Gotta make it fun, but like my favorite relax. is like a high pony. Yeah. yeah, I go for a high pony nine times out of ten. Like when I coach, yeah, that's my go-to, and then I just pull out the front pieces. Yeah. Fun. Okay, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We love chatting with you. We love to ramble about ourselves. Um, yeah. 
probably one of our favorite things to do. Yes. Uh, awesome. Sorry if this was really boring. <laughs> um, if you loved it, please let us know. Make sure you like and subscribe. Follow us all on Instagram. I'll leave our handles down below. Um, and we'll see you guys next time. Yeah. Bye. Cheers.